Hi, so what we're going to do in this video is review adding vectors and solving for the magnitude of the result of a bunch of vectors and also finding the angle of the result vector. Okay, so here's some charges. I forgot to draw B. All right, and what we want to do is find the magnitude of the net force acting on charge B and the angle that that net force is acting at. Right, so I know that A is a positive charge, B is a positive charge, so A is going to push B down and I'm just gonna say that's gonna be a force of two newtons and then I know that C and B are opposite charges so they're gonna attract so C is gonna attract B towards it and I'm gonna say that this force is 3.46 newtons okay so now I want to find the net force acting on B which is the vector sum of those two so what we do first is use superposition to draw those vectors all right, so I'm going to start with the 3.46. And then imagine taking this 2 newton one and remember, head to tail, putting it right up here. Okay, so the resultant is that from start to finish. Okay, so how do I find the magnitude? Pythagorean theorem, right? We've done this. So... The resultant is going to be equal to the square root of the sum of the two sides, right? Because a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So if I rewrite that, I can say it's the square root of 3.46 squared plus 2 squared. And this comes out to be 4 newtons. Okay? So now I know that this is 4 newtons. But what I want to do also is figure out what angle this is acting at. This is something we didn't do much of last year. So let's say I want to solve for this angle. It doesn't matter which one you want to solve for because eventually, like if I solve for this one, I can come back and get this one. And I know that this one's 90. So I'm just going to pick the horizontal angle. Okay, so you remember sine, cosine, and tangent. Sine of an angle was the ratio of the length of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. Cosine was the ratio of the length of adjacent to the hypotenuse. And tangent of an angle was equal to the ratio of the opposite to the adjacent. So these, what I can do is I can plug in an angle and I can get a ratio. But that's not helpful in this case. I need to get that angle. And so what you can do is use the inverse of these functions, right? So basically what sine, cosine, tangent does is it looks up on a table what that is. So the sine of any 30 degree angle is always going to be this ratio. So if we work backwards and use the inverse function, we can plug in the ratio to get the angle. And what that looks like is this. So in this case, the inverse sine or the arc sine of the ratio of opposite to hypotenuse will give me the angle. And the inverse cosine or arc cosine of the ratio of the adjacent hypotenuse will give me the angle. And same thing with tangent. So if you notice, all I did was swap this ratio with this angle. So regular function, inverse function, right? So these will spit out angles. But you got to remember, calculator's got to be in degrees. This won't work for what we're doing in radians, okay? So I want to know that angle. I know all three of those sides, so it doesn't matter which one I use, right? I'm just going to pick tangent for the fun of it. So I know arctangent of opposite over adjacent should give me my angle, right? And if you plug that in your calculator, and if you didn't screw up and you're not in radians, you should get that your angle is 30 degrees. So what that means is this charge at this point right here feels a force of 4 newtons this way at an angle of 30 degrees down from the horizontal. Okay, so what about an example like this? So now there's four charges and same kind of thing. We want to find the net force on D and the angle. So here's charge D. So charge D is being repelled by A and B, but it's being attracted by C. And so let's draw those forces. Again, I'm just going to give you the numbers. So let's say that C is attracting D with a force of 2 newtons. Let's say that B is pushing on D with a force of 2 newtons. And let's say that A is pushing on D with a force of 
one. It's a little messy, but all right. Okay, so again, I have all these vectors right here. I need to redraw it using superposition so that I can add the vectors to get the result. Okay, so what that would look like, I'll do it right here. There's D. So here's the 2-Newton force. Another 2-Newton force. And then a 1-Newton force kind of pointing down like that. And so my resultant looks like that. Okay. Alright, so I can't do this the same way as before because see how, like, I don't have grid paper. If I had grid paper on here and I knew how much this was and how much that was, I could make a little right triangle, right? But see how this doesn't really make a triangle. Okay, so what we need to do is see this vector going at an angle right here? If I broke that into its x and y components, then I would have a bunch of stuff in the x, a bunch of stuff in the y, and I could add them all up, and then I could make a big right triangle. Okay, so what I need to do that. What I need to do, excuse me, is take this and break it into its components. So I'm just going to focus on this little one Newton force right here. Okay, so that one Newton force is going to consist of an X component and a Y component. And if you remember from what we did last year, if I'm going to call, let's see, I'll make this my angle. I know that uh, this is going at a 45 degree angle, right? Because this is making a square, right? So this angle is going to be 45. So this side right here is my sine because it's opposite. And this side right here is my cosine because it's adjacent to where I want my angle. And it's not going to matter because it's a 45 degree angle. So this is 1 times the sine of 45. And this is 1 times the cosine of 45. So now I can come redraw this. Let's do it like this. I'll do it right here. Two Newtons. Two Newtons. But now this one Newton force is broken into a Y and an X. And if you do one cosine 45 and one sine 45, they both come out to the same thing. Zero point seven zero seven right that equals that equals that right because it's a 45 to 45 90 triangle that it's making okay so this will be 0 0.707 and then now I'll pick this one and bring it over here 0 0.707 and now I can make a little triangle because I can add and subtract those sides to figure out what I need. Okay. So let's figure out how big my resultant is in the Y and how big my resultant is in the X. All right, so I'll call this, here's my resultant in the Y, and here's my resultant in the X. So my resultant in the Y is going to be the sum of these two vectors right here. Right, the 2 and the 7.707. So it's going to be 2.707. Okay. And then for the x, see how these two are going opposite ways? So they're going to subtract. So my resultant in the x direction is going to be 2 minus 0.707. And that comes out to 1.293. So now that I've done that, I know my x and my y, so I can go back to the same thing. I can take those two, use Pythagorean theorem to get the magnitude of the result. All right, so if I do that, the resultant is going to be the square root of 2.707 squared plus 1.293 squared. And that comes out to be 2.99. So it's about three newtons. And so same thing now, if I want the angle, like we were talking about before, let's say I'm gonna pick cosine. So let's say this is my angle, All right? I'll use cosine this time. So I know the cosine 
of, I'm sorry, adjacent over hypotenuse is equal to the angle. So if I took the inverse cosine of the adjacent over hypotenuse or the arc cosine, that would give me my angle. So the arc cosine of 2.707, right? over the hypotenuse, which is 2.99, that comes out to be 25.5 degrees. So again, this R, right? R is 2.99 Newtons, and it's acting at an angle of 25.5 degrees from the y right so they're all basically the same concept this one was a little harder because we had to take an angle that was originally i'm sorry a vector that was originally at an angle and we had to break it down into its x and y but once you get to that point when you get everything in your x's and y's it becomes the same thing pythagorean theorem and then sine cosine of tangent okay hope that helped